What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to Gibraltar United. So here we are, we've got the Champions League games against Trenava. And uh, hopefully we'll get a win today, that'll be of course the what we need. Do we want to be progressing through now for every year if we can? It's going to be a tough game, it's going to be a game where definitely in this first match at home we're going to have to be at our very best and perform at our very best if we want to give ourselves a good chance of going through. So, uh, I made a few mistakes in the last video. I believe I said Panathinaikos instead of P-A-O-K, which is our previous friendly. But I also believe I said we were bringing in Fran Benitez. And now that is not true. Fran Benitez is joining in next year. For whatever reason, we were unable to get him in this year, but I was able to sign him for next year. I don't know. Something weird happened there. And as a result, I've signed Ibondo down to a new one-year deal, which means we don't have a new right-back coming in this year, but we're also not losing our right-back. So, you know, we still have a senior right-back. Don't worry. In terms of transfers, you already know all those people who left. In terms of the ins, we have James Wilkinson from Lincoln Gibraltar. You, I already showed you him previously, uh, but I think this guy's got good potential. Could, could be one of the best players to come out of Gibraltar for a few years. So uh, I'm hoping, uh, hopefully, I will develop him. He will be on the bench for today's game. So you know, could make a cheeky appearance in the last ten minutes if we're winning. If not, you know, I, I ideally wouldn't bring him on for this game. Next guy is Rod Austin. He is our new striker. Not. I, I do think there are better strikers out there, and I'm still going to be looking for a better striker. But for those of you who don't know, there are two registration periods. There is a first registration period, which you can add, add and remove as many players as you want. Basically, you're going to add players because you, it starts afresh every year. But then there's also a second one, a bit later on, where you can only re, re, uh, where you can replace two players or add one. And so what I did is I quite I rushed. I didn't rush, but I signed two players very quickly. Uh, who I felt were good enough to get us through this stage of the competition, and then hopefully we'll have assigned maybe a new player in this position. So Rob Austin is one of them players. Uh, he's good, but he's not great. And you know we want we, we want players to take us to the next level. He's definitely not next level, but he'll do for now. And I know I shouldn't really have that attitude, but he will do. I think he'll do anyway. We'll have a look in this game coming up. And this guy is Carmine Di Matteo. Same principle applies. This guy's on a lower wage, only £675 a week. The other guy, I think, was on £925 a week. Di Matteo as well, when he's contract, it is that he's a backup player. So he is here to be a backup player. So the fact that he's going to be starting these first few games will be quite good for him. Um, but like I said, I do think there are better players out there. If we look on his report, you know, he's obviously not great and there are better players out there it's just about finding them and trying to bring them in on a decent wage and the last two signings for us uh for mana who is a left midfielder uh yet to ever make an appearance in any competitive football so this will be his debut today coming up so that's quite an important thing he was registered in time because d2 was signed the um these two were signed after the first registration period had been and gone, so only one of them could be added to the team. It does mean Scalato is currently unavailable. He would have been a backup player and actually would have been on the bench if um, if he was in the selection today. But like I say, he isn't. So if we were to get knocked out in today's game or today's tie, both of the lone players will be released uh, back to their clubs, just like last year. They're just adding a little bit of squad depth and adding some options, which is to my pretty small squad right now. Right now. But I want to talk about the transfers quickly. Um, I've noticed trying to sign players that a lot of people have increased their wage demands. Last year, we, we could have signed a player for less than £1,000 a week in terms of their wage. This year, we'd be lucky to sign someone for less than £2,000 a week who is at the level we were at the levels of Ojeda or Pete Moody. So it's, it's really annoying because I would have loved to have signed Ojeda and Moody. If I'd have known the knowledge now, because like I said, right now the wage demand for joining our club has increased drastically, and they're asking for wages that Moody were asking for in January. But the only reason I didn't give it to Moody in January or not January, December, because that's when I actually offered him the contract, um, I, I turned that down. I said, "Look, I don't really want to offer you that wage. It seems like too large." Now I say, "Look, that's what everyone else is asking for. It's rightly so. You would get that." So it's really, really frustrating. If I, like I said, if I'd have known how the market is now. Back in January, December time, I would have signed them two down straight away. But, you know, those are mistakes I have to live with and I'll push on. I'll try and get some new players in. So let's move on to this Champions League game. So 2,000 people will be here in Victoria Stadium today to hopefully watch us win. Uh, we've got a few trialists who, of course, are, un un are ineligible for selection due to the fact that you can't play trialists in the Champions League. Uh, one, one of them is a recognisable name, Andy Weiman. I did try and get him, but he's currently not willing to talk to me. Um... Also, hopefully, I'll be signing this Alejandro Navarro in the future. I'm not too sure. Uh, the deal's a bit tricky to work out with him, but maybe in the future I can get a deal. 
uh, agreed with him and tie him down here. But if not, you know, just to try and find someone else. But let's run through the squad today. So tactic-wise, it's a 4-4-2 Gibraltar Europe. Um, that's what it's called anyway. Instructions-wise, it is uh, lower tempo, get stuck in, close down more, retain possession, and shorter passing. And each player of, as again, their own sort of individual specific sort of role things, which they're, to which they're told to do. Uh, we're playing some limited defenders, centre mids, uh, deep line playmaker support, which is Di Matteo's role. Both wingers, a target man attack and an advanced player, advanced forward attack. I'm actually going to change to support, sorry. Not attack. But uh, one of the few things I want to talk about with this starting 11 is... First of all, you'll see Alvaro is on the bench. Now, he's injured and not really fit enough to play a full, probably 45 minutes. As a result, you know, if he's not going to be able to play 45 minutes, there's no real point in me starting him. So, it does mean Fumana, who doesn't play right midfield, is going to be making his first ever competitive game at right midfield. Uh, Matthew Kirby, who was also signed a new deal this summer. Uh, his contract expired, I believe, last year, but he stayed here for a full year without actually being on a contract. I offered him £120 a week, which is about £20 more than the lowest possible wage. The lowest wage I can offer any player on a full-time professional senior deal is £100. He got £120, but overall I'm pretty happy with that. He's 19, he's one of the best players in Gibraltar right now, which is quite tragic when you look at him compared to the rest of the players in my team. But... Uh, you know what? I'm I'm happy with that. You know, I'm fine with that. He's here, back up. I'm really good for that. And look at that. Relishes big matches. Hopefully, we'll see a performance today that shows that, illustrates that. Uh, also, one of the reasons Fumana actually comes in today at right mid instead of Borge is because, well, I mean, look at him. <laughs> you know, that, that's, re that's the reason why. I'd rather play a winger, a left mid who can't actually play right mid, but he's still a winger and it's still the same role, it's just on the other side. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure he'll, tr you know, we'll try and move on with that. I don't want him deep line forward, actually, this guy. You see, the thing is with Rod Austin is he can't play target man. I like playing target man up front if I'm playing two. I like one guy to be a tall man, one guy to be a small man, or one guy to be a target man, one guy to be a outlet, you know, advance forward, a, po a poacher, or maybe a complete forward or something like that. I don't really have that right now, which is why I want to sign Navarro, who is actually a target man. I'll give you a quick glimpse of him because he may be a future player. Um, but yeah, this guy looks pretty good. Uh, had a really good year last year in the third tier of Spanish football, scoring 20 goals in 40 league games. So that's really good. But yeah, this is the team we're going to go out with. And, um, you know, let's go. Let's see how we do. There could be a few debutants today. Uh, are they, there could be a possible, there will, there will be definitely two debuts today to, uh, Fumana and Di Matteo and actually three, sorry, Fumana, Di Matteo and Austin. And it could also be the potential of another one if James Wilkinson comes on a bit later on in the match. Um, so, Rod Austin, you can pick yourself up number, not really a striker's number, number 8. James Wilkinson, you can pick yourself up number 14. Di Matteo, 8. Um, Miguel Fernandez, you can pick up number 15. Uh, Fermana, you can pick up 20. And Betts, you can pick up 27. 28, 20, whatever I gave you, 26. And let's go. Let's do this. Big, big game. Hopefully, we'll start off brightly. Um, being a being a big game like this at home first, we really need to give ourselves any sort of advantage we can going into the second leg and make sure Trinava don't actually get an away goal. Because if they get an away goal, it's going to make our task very, very hard. And I would like to go into the second leg with an advantage so I can actually go out there with a slightly defensive tactic. Maybe the 5-4-1 we played in, played last season. You know, that would be, that would be pretty good if we could do that. But let's see how we go. Uh, they're kicking off in the, our first game in Europe this season. And it's nice to see it a bit later on than we normally start. And there you go. Smith starting off to Albi, playing it short. Here is Kirby back to Di Matteo, debut in the Gibraltar United shirt. Here is Miller with the ball. Um, captains the team today. He is now our captain. Uh, and Morgan will be our vice captain after this now. As they're on the attack and they've got a chance here. They play it few beautifully and it is a very good save from Smith. Keeping out Trinava and forcing them, uh, giving them a corner. Fantastic save from Smith keeping us in the game so far. And yet again it is Trinava with another corner. And they started off very, very brightly. The Slovakian or Slovenian, I think the Slovakian. A Slovakian team got to, they started off lightning quick. And we were just unable to really do anything there. And we find ourselves trailing in this game and not playing particularly well. I'm going to encourage the lads. Um, I certainly encourage the lads. See what we can do. We're punting it forward. I don't know why I've told shorter passings on. You know, we don't be punting it forward. And yet again, it's there through and they've hit the post. 
and they've somehow missed the rebound. We are getting slaughtered out there. We've got a free kick here with Morgan, who manages to just squeeze that one in. We're going to go to a more counter mentality, and we're actually going to go to a slightly more structured standard of football. But Morgan does get us back in the game with a cracking free kick. Keeper should be doing a lot better, though. He's beaten at his near post. Uh, beating at his post anyway, not exactly a near post, but he's beating at his post that he's meant to cover. The wall's covering that side. He's covering um, his right and should be doing a lot better there. But a great free kick for Morgan. I think they hit the post as well to go in. So, you know, narrowest of um, margins there between a goal and a miss. Fantastic. Back on level terms. That's fine. No, Ibondo, don't be clearing it like that. And, um, oh no, please. No, they've got through again. Fantastic save from Smith. They're finding the gaps, and it is very, very worrying. I'm going to go into advanced tactics now. They're just finding too many gaps in the team, and I'm going to have to change up something before, you know, it's too late, you know, before it all goes, before we lose that chance. So you are going to, Di Matteo, you're going to become a centre midfielder, defend. Austin, you're going to become an advanced player, maker, support. Uh, Morgan, you're going to become a defensive midfielder, defend. Uh, your main role to hold the position between the midfield and defensive line and recycle possession from the deep. Uh, maybe not ball winning midfielder defend. Yeah, I think he's a good ball winning midfielder. We'll go with that. Come on, Morgan. All right, just to try and see if we can prevent them balls going through our team as easily as they are right now. Managed to clear the corner away first time, but they've still got another corner, and apparently it's worthy of a highlight. Smith manages to gather the ball, who Smith has actually kept us in this game a lot right now. I'm also going to do a team talk. I'm going to uh, calmly tell the lads that the pressure is off. A lot of them are looking very nervous, and I think I need to reiterate the point that, you know, go out there with cool level heads and the game will come. I mean, we're not looking comfortable right now. We're getting the, we're getting the possession under control. You know, 55% of the ball now has come our way, which is all right. You know, it's not great, but it's all right. Um, still not creating any chances with that, and people are still looking quite nervous. But I think the only way we're going to improve that is get them in at halftime at 1-1 and then actually have a proper team talk with them. See what Portillo wants to do and if I agree with that, because everyone is looking very nervous, and that's something we're going to have to change. Good first half. I don't know. I kind of want to calmly tell the lads. Um... The way the game is set, go back out there and play without pressure. The way the game is set, you can go back out there in the second half. No, we can't say that. You know, I'm going to go with Portello, what he said. There we go. All the, Actually, a lot of them who look nervous have now looked delighted or happy. Hopefully that rubs off to everyone. Let's see what that team talk did, does to the overall outcome of the game. It was a pretty good team talk, actually, in all fairness. Uh, so let's go actually go and make us. We're going to make a substitution right now. We are going to take off Kirby, who's looking quite tired. Actually, put Fumana out on the left and bring Alvaro on. Um, Austin's looking quite tired as well. I think we're going to take him off and we will be bringing on James Wilkinson for his debut today. And um, let's see what them guys can do in the midfield. Um, you know, they could definitely make a difference, especially Alvaro, who is, you know, is a very good winger and could create that one opportunity we need to get the goal. You know, he's, he's got that kind of quality in him. But after the very, very shaky first half, and definitely first 45, we have we've sl slowly clawed our way back into the game. You know, at least it's now... Okay, the second half has been very, very boring, but it's not as bad as it was in the first half. You know, we were all over the place, and we, were very, we are very lucky to be at 1-1 with the chances they had, with Smith's good opportunities and some poor finishing from them. We are very fortunate to go away from this leg at 1-1. And hopefully in the second leg, we can play a little bit better and maybe show what we can actually do. Show that we can actually play football against Trenava. It's asking a lot. We will have to go there and score a goal, which is, again, a bit of a task. But if we can score that goal early, we can do what we did in this game. We can change up the tactic and look to shut up shop. And that's what I did once we got 1-1 because, you know, it was about damage limitation at that point. We were so, so dodgy. I, could, I didn't really want to risk conceding more just to try and add a, keep the, the, the attacking threat there. But anyway... 1-1, one, one. I'll meet you guys back in a second, where hopefully we can get something out of this second leg. We've made the trip to Slovakia. 600, 6,685 people are going to be here today to hopefully witness us beat their team. I think for the first time ever in any competition in Europe, we go into the second leg with a draw and with a scoring draw. So we really don't want to be throwing away this opportunity we have to go through to the next stage of the competition. Now, 
A few things you'll see is, well, first of all, I think you'll see that Alvaro has returned to the starting eleven. That um, that was given once he, you know, once the injury had gone and he'd gained back his fitness, he was getting in the team. Also, you'll see Dan Morgan has IJC next to his name. What that means is Dan Morgan is currently injected up, and uh, he is just about able to play this game due to his injury. I don't actually know what he got injured with. Um, I can't remember that. Let me go on injuries actually. He got a bruised rib, so that kept him out. We injected him up for this game just to try and... Just because I didn't really want to start James Wilkinson. That would have been the last thing I wanted. And Dan Morgan is a very solid and very good player. And someone we can definitely use with this team. Also, tactic-wise, we've returned back to the formation we played. Or the, the tactic we played in the previous year in Europe against Dynamo and against HJK. We didn't find much success with the last tactic in the previous match. But we just managed to scrape a 1-1 draw. So this time round, let's hope we can do a little bit better and try and get the get a victory or get a scoring draw. A scoring draw is enough to at least force extra time or maybe even get ourselves a win. Ideally, we'd score two goals. That way, we have a cushion for ourselves. We don't want to fall behind. So it is a 4-4-2 they're going out with yet again. Uh, I'm just going to sort this out. I want to show these guys onto their weaker foot. Show this guy onto his right and this guy onto his left. I believe they're left and right footed, these guys. He is right footed. That was just making an assumption, by the way, there. <laughs> I didn't I didn't actually know. I just presumed that they, they would have that. Um, but yeah, let's go. You know, Let's see what we can do. Portillo, uh, all right, team talk, I guess. Let's do this, though. Let's see what we can do. We need a better performance defensively than we played in the first half last game. And we also need to have a better second half as well. We need to attack them from, or at least present an attacking threat from the first minute to the last minute. And great save from Smith from the free kick. It was definitely going in. There was no doubt about it. And he got over and covered it really well. But we've forgiven away a ball. We Bondo trying to find a, a diagonal ball. It would be hard for many players to do. And ah, oh, we fucking fall behind. Oh, it's offside. Thank God for that. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. We do not want to fall behind. We do not want to give them any sort of advantage that they, you know, they already have one. We don't want to let them grow on it by getting themselves a goal. And the game is flying by. Nothing really happening. They've got themselves a free kick. They've given it away. Albi's cleared it forward. But um, no one was able to get that from our team. And yet again, they're able to get through. And it's Smith with another good save. Able to, you know, able to get that one. Able to catch it in midair. To hold that as well is actually quite a good save from Smith. As I seem to be saying quite a bit with Smith. He does really well to save his chances. Kovac with the ball. Oh, they're passing it around beautifully. And it is Kovac through and they've played it across the face of goal. And they do finally manage to get that goal. And it is through us being very, very poor defensively. Very poor. Come on, Ingles, come on, lads. Play better than this. We can. We've had a half chance. Not highlight worthy. That's poor. Means it wasn't exactly a great opportunity to start with. And I'm going to have to say this. I'm going to say this aggressively. I expect more from you in the second half. Smith's looking stressed, but the rest of them reacted in a positive way. And hopefully I can see a response. That's what I need. A response. I need to see us present an, an attacking threat to Trinava. Kovac running with the ball. They're able just to move around past the ball with ease, you know, without much threat, really. Adam with the ball to Kovac. To Slisko. Kovac, they passed it around beautifully there, and Smith does well to keep them out, but that was really, really good football from them. They passed it for a long time without us even getting near the ball. And yet again, highlight, let's see what we can do. We need to do something. We've not had a highlight our way yet. Here is, oh, I was going to say, here is maybe our chance, but we lose the ball. Miller gives it away. They go for the big ball forward. We punt it straight back at them come on try and get it down here is Austin getting the ball down good now let's go play some football Di Matteo to Austin Austin to Miller playing it back keeping the ball Miller turns have a dig son Miller with the goal gets in there what a finish only a half chance but he put that in and you know somehow found the gap there a bit like in the first game with our free kick just about finding the gap Miller turning and shooting, didn't have much time, didn't have much space, but managed to get that in the top right-hand corner, beating the goalkeeper at the near post. 
Good goal. 1-1. One, one. Captain has scored. Hopefully that will motivate the team and try and give them ourselves the edge. We're going to make a sub. Kirby's not having a good game. We are going to bring on um, Fumana. Uh, Fumana, sorry, I think. And we're going to bring him on and see what he can do. Uh, Dan Morgan's not having a good game, but we're going to keep him on because like, it's either that or Wilkinson. And, you know, <laughs> you know, there's not really... Uh, I don't know yet if I really want to be putting him in too much. There's Di Matteo. A little bit of space in front of him, but I told him not to really dribble with the ball, so that's why he's not running forward. But we're passing it around nicely, and Miller, yet again in a shooting opportunity, he doesn't go for the shot this time, and it's actually a really good tackle from the defender on a yellow. This could be a counter-attack for Trinava. We don't really need to be giving him that. Here's Kovac one-on-one -on -one and misses the chance, misses the opportunity. That is a click opportunity for them, wasted yet again. Um, I'm just going to tell the lads calmly, pressure is off. No pressure. No pressure. Calmly tell the lads, no pressure. Especially you, no pressure. Just tell, the, tell those who are nervous that you know, there's nothing to worry about. Keep going. Just calm down, relax, play your football. Here's a chance from us, Alvaro. Over the near post. Austin Perez hits the post. Perez hits the post in the 85th minute of the game. Wasting our first and only clear -cut opportunity of the game so far. Perez, are oh, so unlucky. We're still in the 88th minute and we've still got the ball. We're trying to get that last last late minute goal to Alvaro. Back to Ibondo. Morgan. Di Matteo. To Miller. To Austin. Please be onside. Please be onside. It's getting there. Goal. 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 Austin, first ever goal for Gibraltar United in the 88th minute. And my God, he is onside. He's quite onside, actually. The... The um, guy at the, the, the left centre back or the left back, I don't know which, or the right centre back or the right back for them, keeps them all on side. Ah, oh, shit, I wanted to make tactical changes. Um, well, it's too late now, isn't it? The other highlights in, in motion. Di Matteo out wide to Alvaro. I think they went for it. And as a result, we're finding gaps. Penalty. It is a penalty, son. And I think Miller is stepping up to take this. He is captain, looking to try and get his second of the game after he's won the goal. Oh, really good goal. To, I won the goal, but a really good goal to get us back on level terms. He scores the penalty, and that is us through to the Champions League third qualifying phase. Oh, we made it hard on ourselves. We really did. At the end of the day, match stats would look like it was a game that was evenly fought, and we just took our chances. We definitely took our chances out of the two ties, we, which is quite strange. Out of the two teams, we took our chances more. But we still wasted a few. Wasted a few. Quite a few. And, um, wow, what a save from Smith. I really do love Smith. I want to keep that guy for a long time because he looks like an absolutely outstanding keeper. Some of the saves he performs. But 3-1, we did it again, guys. We fought back like last year against HJK where we lost in the first leg and came back with a really good second leg performance. This time round, we had a shocking first leg. We were really fortunate to walk away 1-1 in the second leg. We performed the way we could and our strikers were on it. Really, everyone was on it. Defence looked shaky at times, but at the end, they we all, you know, all came together and in the last 10 minutes, we looked like we were the only team looking to try and score, looking to try and win the game. And for that, we got rewarded and managed to win the game 3-1 in the end. Absolutely fantastic. Now, who will we get in the next game? Apparently, that was a controversial penalty at the end there, by the way. But who did we get? Who will we be getting in the next round of the competition? Well, I already know. Let me just continue forward, and there it is. Sport United will play FC Basel in the UEFA Champions League Champions third qualifying phase. Basel have been drawn at home tie for the first leg, and will play at St Jacobs Park. Um, and then the second leg will be played at ours. Oh, PSG won the competition. Ooh, a French team winning. How lucky. But what an absolutely brilliant chance we've have now. Basel, I mean, they're going to be a tough team, but they're always going to get tough teams at this stage of the competition. I th definitely in the first leg, we'll be going out with the 5-4-1, looking to try and, you know, be very solid defensively. And then in the second leg, we'll have a look what we can do. You know, that's all I can do. Perez reveals the fury. You know, on the other back, was not happy with the way I handled the team talk. But yet Morgan credits me for my fantastic halftime team talk. It shows players do have different person different personalities will react differently. The goalkeeper and Perez were the only two players out of the whole squad to react negatively to my aggressive team talk. The rest of them acted positively and we ended up getting the win we needed. So I definitely said the team talk worked. Um we've been handed this off tie, yes. Um you know, looking at some of the teams in this competition, maybe not as far 
at all, but we're just happy to be here and we'll take one game at a time. That's what I'm going to say. Dan Morgan is out for apparently two weeks. I would like to inject him up for the Basel game, though, if I'm, if at all possible. Uh, so, yeah. I was actually meant to pe take part in a testimonial um, during the time these games have, have occurred. Um, I don't know which one it is. It might be the Glasses United one. I'm not too sure, but I've still got a testimonial. The reason I wouldn't cancel that is because it's a testimonial. You know, you've got to go to a testimonial if the team arranges it. And I, I got a lot this year of invites to do people's testimonials, so I, I accepted them all just because I'm a nice guy like that. But anyway, guys, I will meet you back for the Basel game. I just realised, so far this season, in the Champions League, we are undefeated. <laughs> uh, probably the first time we've played two games in... Oh, uh, first time we've ever had the ability to say that at the third qualifying phase since last year. was so, You know, that's not much of an achievement. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the Basel game. So until then, guys, peace out.